In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing my first ever brand new pair of barefoot shoes, unlike my current collection, which have all been secondhand or refurbished, and that is the Ahinza Jaya Winter Zip Up All Black Boots. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thanks for joining me. So if you're new here, my name is Meg, welcome to Red Curl Vegan. If you're already subscribed or you're familiar with my channel, then you may know that I am a big lover, advocate and exclusive wearer of barefoot or zero drop shoes. So I'm reviewing another pair of minimalist shoes for you today. Super excited about this video because this is my first experience of owning a pair of shoes from the barefoot brand Ahinza. I'm going to be going over the general characteristics of them, as always sharing with you my reasons for buying them, a little bit about the company themselves, maybe some of the disadvantages and most definitely lots of advantages of these boots and all that kind of good stuff. So let's jump right into the video. So I think the first thing I want to mention about these boots to sort of get it out of the way in this video is the price. Now these are some expensive boots. On this occasion, I didn't actually purchase these myself. These were a very special gift from my partner for my birthday. I've had my eye on these boots for a really long time, but I just simply couldn't justify the cost of them. Unlike my more reasonable purchases of secondhand or refurbished shoes, which I've reviewed all already on my channel, these were just too expensive. So I recently turned 35, which I felt was a big enough milestone to sort of request such a special gift. So I'm very grateful for them. They mean a lot to me. I feel very lucky to finally own a pair and I absolutely love them. So the cost of these boots was 172 pounds. On top of that, there was approximately £14 postage. And then on top of that, again, there was around about £50 for import duties as well. So all in all, these boots did cost about £240. Now, for me personally, that is a lot of money. I know that there are plenty of mainstream conventional shoes within that price range. And to some people, this may be a fairly reasonable price for a pair of boots. But for me, it is a lot of money and they are without a doubt the most expensive pair of shoes and item of clothing that I currently own. But I do think they were worth it. So now that we've kind of got the price of them out of the way, I think it's fair to say that there is a reason why these boots are so expensive. So Ahinza is a barefoot shoe company based in the Czech Republic. All of their shoes are designed by physiotherapists. All of the materials are sourced from within Europe and all of their shoes are ethically made. So the Jaya boot actually comes in 32 different variations. So I would definitely recommend going and checking out their website, which I'll link down in the description box for you. So they, this is the fur lined zip up winter barefoot version. So they also do a comfort version. From what I understand, it's basically a thicker insole for those of you who may feel you want a little bit more padding between your foot and the floor or for people who maybe aren't accustomed to wearing barefoot shoes. They also do a version without a zip. They also do a version that isn't fur lined. So that's more their autumn winter version. And then these also come in brown and they also come in a white fur lined version as well. And then on top of that, from what I can see on their website, there's also blue, red and grey option as well, but they look like they're being discontinued and they're currently in the sale. And then there are also men's versions as well. So definitely a very versatile boot in terms of options and different colours and designs for different feet shapes or preferences, for example. So that's a really, really good positive thing about the company itself. I think that offering so much variety and such a wide range of options, because from what I can see, other models and other designs also offer quite a lot of variations as well. So in terms of these in particular, like I said, these are the zip up pair. These are the generic barefoot pair. They haven't got any extra cushioning. These are the fully lined pair. These are the black fur lined version as opposed to the white version and these are considered as their winter boot because of the fur lining. So on the subject of the fur lining, this is one of the things that drew me to them and why I chose these over the non fur lined version. They are fully lined. And when I say every inch of the inside of these boots is lined, I'm not kidding. So the sides, the entire tongue all the way down, the top of the foot inside here, the sides along here, and even the insole is fur lined and thermal as well. 
So whilst the fur lining was one of the deciding factors in choosing these versus the non-lined pair, I do worry potentially whether they're going to be too warm or whether they're going to encourage sweating. Obviously at the moment it isn't cold enough yet for me to make that judgement and I'm definitely going to keep them, I don't think I'm going to return them. So whilst it was something that attracted me to them, they are a lot more fur lined than I expected. But I think as somebody who unfortunately does suffer with very severe chillblains, I think that they are going to be my new best friend and I'm hoping that when the winter comes I'm going to, or they're going to prove me wrong and they're going to be the best decision that I ever made. So the other thing that particularly drew them to me, possibly the main thing, is this zip. Now I'm not a lazy person but when it comes to boots I really can't be bothered with doing up and undoing all of these laces, particularly with a boot this high and the fact that they have a really easy zip on the side is definitely one of the main things that attracted me to these boots. So moving on to the characteristics and the design and the construction of them, these are 100% vegan leather and also 100% vegan fur lined. They're also waterproof and they have all the typical characteristics of barefoot shoes, if not even better. So I'm being completely honest when I say this and I haven't worn these outdoors yet because like I just sort of explained it's not really cold enough to wear them yet and I only just got them in the post a couple of days ago so I can't speak from experience of wearing them outdoors yet but I am being deadly serious when I say I think these are the most comfortable pair of barefoot shoes I have ever owned and that is quite a big statement because all of my barefoot shoes so far if you're familiar with my channel have all been from Vivo Barefoot and they've all been refurbished by Revivo and I'm a little bit biased whilst I've never been sponsored by Revivo or Vivo Barefoot, I've never been affiliated with those brands, I do feel that they are the best barefoot brand out there currently. They offer the widest range of sort of fields of shoes if that makes sense so walking and sports and boots and casual and smart and sandals but I will say I think these are the most comfortable pair I've owned so far particularly for a boot it's quite astonishing how lightweight they are and let me just show you this flexibility it's just absolutely amazing I mean and it, they even bend down the middle all barefoot shoes are flexible, Vivos are synonymous of the characteristics of barefoot shoes and the flexibility is one of the most important factors of them. But the heel bending even down the middle like this and being able to roll the whole boot so easily, I mean, there is not a single conventional mainstream normal pair of boots or shoes, let alone boots, that you could do this with. So. The flexibility is something that I am quite shocked by in a very, very good way. They're also super, super lightweight. I've said that about boots in the past when I've reviewed other barefoot boots on my channel, but these are incredibly lightweight and they're also the tallest boot that I own. So the fact that they're lighter than any other boot I've ever reviewed or that I've ever known is quite astonishing. So like I said they are waterproof but I will point out in this video because I always want to give an honest true reflection of my opinion and experience of owning barefoot shoes and when, when I get a new pair. Whilst they are waterproof the tongue so to speak I think that's the right word and the sides where the laces are isn't that so that's not attached so I'm not sure if you can see what I mean on camera but basically you can see I can put my hand straight through there. So this vegan leather that these are made with is waterproof, also very durable and scratch resistant to the point where their website even states that they have tested it with a fork. The fact that they aren't stitched here does slightly confuse me because even once they are done up and you've got your foot in there, Obviously then it's putting a bit more pressure on the, the, the tongue of the boot because it's sort of pushing it forward. This isn't sealed, so from my experience of other barefoot boots, for example my Tracker FGs, my Tracker Highs from Vivo Barefoot, the a, a barefoot, sorry, a waterproof boot usually will be stitched in and sealed at the sides to sort of represent the claim that they are waterproof. So. I'm not entirely sure what that means moving forward. Uh, like I said earlier, even despite my concern about them being too warm, which I can't believe I'm saying, 
I am still going to keep them because I think they're so special to me and I think they really tick so many boxes. Uh, which reminds me, these are replacing the Gobi Highs that I recently sold on eBay from Vivo Barefoot, refurbished by Revivo. A uh, pair of generic black boots that were also waterproof. They were leather, but I bought them secondhand. And I explained in my most recent Barefoot Shoe video, which was a review of the Tracker Decon by Vivo Barefoot, that I was beginning to feel that Vivo Barefoot shoes were coming up a little bit narrow in the toe box. So I decided to not do another winter with those boots. I wore them the entire winter last year. I worked all the way through the winter wearing them as well. Very comfortable, but beginning to feel like my feet are slightly changing in shape, which you would hope that is sort of the whole point of, of uh, fully transitioning, sorry, over to barefoot shoes. So that's why these came about, basically. That's why I decided that I wanted to get them and I requested them as a gift because I have a minimalist wardrobe, so I tend to only... Well, I tend to try to not own things that I don't wear or that I don't need. So I have quite a minimal collection of shoes compared to what I used to own. So those have been moved on and it's basically made room for these new ones. So on the subject of toe boxes, I think aside from the flexibility of them, which I still can't quite get over, is the width of the toe box. As I just explained, one of the main reasons why I got rid of the Gobi Highs, aside from the fact that I also didn't really love the style of them anymore, was to do with the width of the toe box. The width of these is, is astonishing. It is the widest shoe I've ever owned, particularly the widest boot. And I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see that on camera. The width is 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 pretty unreal. Um, definitely the widest toe box I've ever had, or even that I've tried on, even shoes that I've returned. And I will say, being very, very honest in this video, that I feel as though some people may find these a bit clownish. So there is a bit of a stigma around barefoot shoes that they look like clown shoes because they're very wide in the toe box and they're not trying to be fashionable they are practical healthy shoes that are designed around your feet rather than trying to restrict your toes and just be for the sake of fashion so i will admit that when i first saw them i did think wow those are some wide toe boxes but for me personally having transitioned fully now to barefoot shoes for the last two years I've sort of prioritised my health and my feet and my balance and my body in general over fashion because it is a commonly known fact that barefoot shoes aren't as fashionable as mainstream shoes. There isn't as much choice, there isn't as big of a variety and, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't tend to focus on the latest fashion. The focus of barefoot shoes is, is for your health and that's that's why I made the transition. So from a style perspective, these may appear too wide for some people, um, but that's actually the reason why I wanted to get them because I knew from their website and doing the research and looking at the photos that these would be a lot wider than the gobies that I had. So then I wouldn't be running the risk of encountering the same problem again, basically, especially when you're investing in such an expensive pair of boots they really have to tick a lot of boxes. So I am quite particular when it comes to spending any amount of money. Whether it's me that's purchased these or not, it's extremely important that they fit the bill, so to speak, because otherwise it's a waste. It doesn't matter whether they were a gift or whether I bought them, um, that the money has to be spent mindfully. So yes, I've slightly gone off on a bit of a tangent, but they are very, very wide. And I do feel that there are some people that may deem them a bit too clownish looking. I'm going to pop some short clips up on the screen for you to see what they actually look like on. I did that in my last review video because some of you had left some really helpful constructive feedback saying that you'd like to see what the shoes actually look like on in terms of style and, and how they actually look like on me rather than just showing you them on the camera. So I will pop some clips up. Hopefully that will help you to sort of form a judgment as to whether you think they look too clownish or whether that's something that doesn't bother you because your toes and your feet are more important to you. I personally think they are a really attractive boot. And whilst the toe is very, very wide, to me, that's a huge advantage. That's one of the main reasons I 
invested in them and I wanted to get them. I think they look quite biker chic. I don't know, that's just me personally. I personally like that style. Uh, the fact that they brought out a black version of the fur lining was the best thing that Ahinza could have thought of because they previously only did them in a white lining, which I think is a bit ugly. So I'm really glad that they decided to bring them out in an all black version. I think they look really nice. I like that you can see a little bit of the fur poking out the top. They're a pretty basic boot, really. There's nothing particularly special about them, I wouldn't say, but I really, really love them. They've got this sort of, I wouldn't say raised, but it sort of sticks out a little bit here, the heel. So I think that's to protect your heel. Like I mentioned earlier, the flexibility of them is just, I mean, it's just unbelievable. I'm going to see if I can try and do the signature barefoot shoe roll for you just so you can sort of fully see how insane that is i mean that is a full-blown calf length size pair of boots that i've just managed to roll up like that so in terms of the look of them yeah pretty basic it's a it's a fairly simple pair of boots but i find them very very attractive and whilst the gobies that i previously owned was also just a fairly generic pair of black boots that were also fur lined I much prefer the look of these. The wide toe box doesn't bother me. I personally feel happier that my toes are going to have more space and with thicker socks they're not going to feel so restricted. And the other thing I wanted to mention in terms of the design is that these have been basically made so that the laces adjust to any calf size. So the website says that they are designed for both, sorry, wider or very narrow calves. So they've got a fairly narrow structure at the back, as you can see there. There's not sort of a lot of padding around the back, which I think is really good. And then they've been constructed and made in a way that the lacing adjusts to any calf. So that sort of explains why the tongue isn't attached to the side of the boot. So I guess you can't have everything. To me, they're pretty perfect. So yes, the fact that they adjust as well as offering so many different variations of them is definitely a thumbs up for me, from me, sorry, um, in terms of Ihinza as a company. So I think that's pretty much it. I hope that the clips that I pop up on the screen help you to get an idea of what they actually look like on a real person. <laughs> I really, really love them. The flexibility, the lightweightness of them, the wide wide toe boxes i like the fact that they're a, quite a bit higher than oh, than a standard pair of boots they're probably a couple centimeters at least higher than the gobies that i had which unfortunately i don't have any more to give you a side by side comparison which is a bit of a shame i didn't think they'd sell as quickly as they would uh, as they did sorry but i'll pop a photo of them up on the screen i love the black lining the zip excellent absolutely excellent I just love them. I love how lightweight they feel. They are like wearing a pair of slippers and yet they are a full-blown fur-lined, sturdy, waterproof winter boot. I mean, it's just, it's astonishing. I could literally wear them to bed, <laughs> not even exaggerating. And the vegan leather is super, super durable, scratch resistant. They have apparently an indestructible German sole, nothing particularly complex about the tread but I trust that it's going to be absolutely fine once I start wearing them outdoors in various different conditions. What, what else can I say? I, I absolutely love them. I can't wait to start wearing them. I so far feel that Ahinza is a really good company. I like the fact that they are ethically made and obviously that they're vegan. So I do own leather shoes, which I've mentioned in lots of previous videos about my stance on that, even as a vegan. So because they've all been secondhand or refurbished and pre-loved i don't feel personally that i contributed to the demand for new leather products but that is just my stance i know that it's potentially controversial it's the only part of my current lifestyle that i don't feel fully comfortable with but i had to make a decision that prioritized the health of my feet and the health of my body versus all the other changes and commitments to animals and the planet that I've made. Slightly just gone off on a bit of a tangent there, but yes, so these are vegan, but the the construction of them is plastic. So that's for you to assess which one you feel is potentially more sustainable, which one you feel is a better choice for you. 
but yes waterproof 100% vegan materials they're zipped they've got a lovely full fur vegan fur lining on the inside very wide toe boxes super lightweight extremely flexible very very comfortable huge thumbs up for me so far so that brings us to the end of the video i really do hope that you found it helpful as always please do let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to know or if you feel that there's anything i missed out i always take on board your feedback so that i can grow not only as a content creator but also so that i can grow in terms of confidence and get better at filming and most importantly deliver what you need and the best reviews possible if you haven't subscribed already please make sure to hit that subscribe button as a small content creator i can't tell you how much it means to me when you follow my channel and my journey also give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new upcoming videos and in the meantime take care and stay safe see you soon bye